Welcome in to Payoff Pitch, Action Network's MLB betting podcast presented by BetMGM. It is Friday, May 12th. Brendan Glasheen alongside Charlie DeSterco and Anthony DeBundo. We've got a lot to get to here on the show. 15 game slate, everyone's in action. If you aren't aware already, Payoff Pitch every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, three days a week during the baseball season. Please rate, review, subscribe. Folks, you have been fantastic so far, about a month and a half into the season. Our listenership has been terrific. We appreciate you. We hit 100 episodes last week on Payoff Pitch, all-time episodes of Payoff Pitch. We were doing some shows last year, too. Let's get into best bets for the day. We start with strictly best bets. Charlie DeSterco, he's turning to my neck of the woods. He's going to Boston, Fenway Park, Red Sox, Cardinals, We've got two pitchers that I'm sort of fascinated by. One just made his return a few weeks ago or last week over the weekend and another who's making his Red Sox debut. What do you got, Charlie? Yeah, I'm taking the over here. I got the over at 10. I'd still take it up to 10 and a half, even that 11. I think there's going to be plenty of runs here. Adam Wainwright, the lockbox himself, age 41 season, obviously returned last week, gave up four runs against the Detroit Tigers offense that Really can't hit right-handed pitching. We'll get more into that a little bit later. But if you, t- if you don't even take into account Wayno's first start and him just adjusting to major league play this season and look back at last year, there's some concerns throughout the entire board. A four and a half expected ERA. His batting average, expected batting average, expected slugging, both bottom 25% of all pitchers. And, and he's got a sub 18% strikeout rate. So he's forcing bat- batters to put the ball in play. He's not striking out, generating the swings and misses. And that's just not a good recipe here. The the Boston offense is clicking on all cylinders. We've seen Yoshida just come in and absolutely devour the competition the last few weeks. The Red Sox are top five in ISO, WRC+, plus, weighted on base average. So I think there's going to be plenty of runs and opportunities for the Red Sox to strike early here against Wayno. And then the same can be said, I, I don't understand how this number is only just 10 and a half. James Paxton makes his debut for the first time since April 6th, 2021. And then if you don't even count that, you know, the year before he barely pitched as well. So he has seen very minimal time in the majors the last few years, coming back from Tommy John surgery in re in his rehab outings this year, a six, two, three ERA in 21 and two thirds innings. So he has shown absolutely nothing for you to be high on. He has, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to fade him with expectations. And, and, the, and as much as St. Louis has struggled, they're 12th in Woba and 10th in WRC plus. So I'm expecting the, the Cardinals to get the packs in here. You should have expectations really low, uh, Glash. It's uh, he's bottom fifteen percent of all pitchers in hard hit rate and barrel rate last year, or the last time we saw him in bulk. He's been pitching in Worcester, the AAA affiliate in uh, for the Red Sox, up on uh, up at I, on I ninety. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just imagining if BJ Cunningham was here, he'd say, "Oh, you know, Charlie, James Paxton is a good pitcher," <laughs> and then he'd go into his you know, all the crap he throws and what he did in like 2017. And yeah, right. He'd say, everything, he'd say everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. When he was, when he was good back in the day before, like all these injuries just caught up to him. And I forgot to say also weather impact, the wind's blowing directly out. So yep. 15% increase in home run expected and 10% run expected increase from our Roto grinders weather edge. So, I mean, the ball's going to be flying <clears throat> and these two pitchers, they rely on pitching the contact. They don't have high strikeout numbers. So I think the ball's going to be flying around in the park. Red Sox have been a great over team this year. They've hit the over in six of their last nine. Best over win percentage in baseball, 25-12-1 to the over, 68%. DeBundo, best bet for Friday. What do you got? Go the Detroit Tigers, plus 105, plus 110 against the Seattle Mariners. Uh, Marco Gonzalez taking the mound for Seattle. Uh, has pitched decently well this year at times. You know, when when the command is really good and he's able to avoid uh, the middle of the plate, he's actually been decent. Uh, and we've seen a pretty solid market adjustment toward the Tigers in the last couple of weeks, uh, just on based on those prices against the Guardians. Uh, the Tigers are a team that are getting decent market respect. But, you know, with Gonzalez, it's the same as it ever was. Uh, the strikeout minus walk rate is, is sub 10%, which is pretty much about as close as you're going to get to a replacement level pitcher. Uh, expected ERA once again sitting around 4.6 this season, 4.5 last year, five the year prior. So we have a generally big sample on what Marco Gonzalez is at this point, and it's really the Tigers splits, and they project a lot better against left-handed pitching, uh, right around a league average offense. 
So with them being at home as an underdog against Gonzalez, I think that they have the uh, starting pitcher edge here as well with Matt, Matt Boyd going. Boyd's nothing special. Mariners also in their better offensive split. Uh, but again, I've talked about this with the Mariners recently, and Julio Rodriguez actually bat six the other day. His uh, chase rates are up, and I'm a little worried about Julio right now. He might be dealing with some kind of an injury, too. He's been stealing less. So uh, there are some concerns. If Julio isn't hitting, people forget just how much he carried this offense in the second half of last season. So I do have some real concerns about the Seattle offense continuing to produce. Uh, and of course, with the bullpen there, uh, always good once Marco gets out of the game at, at you know shutting down run production. Okay, let's find out if we're going to fade the public on this Friday. We're looking at the Action app, one of those pro accounts, one of those giveaways potentially if you uh, do what we told you at the top of the show. But when you do so, you can find some competitive edges. And one of those things is where the money might be coming in on a certain game. And our indicators tell us on this Friday morning that the Braves are getting love on the road in Toronto. Braves, Blue Jays, 73% of the bets, 94% of the cash coming in on Spencer Strider and Atlanta to defeat Chris Bassett and the Blue Jays. Toronto uh, has come into this one. They've lost a couple in a row. They're three and seven in their last 10 Spencer Strider is one of the best pitchers in baseball. So are we willing, Charlie, to back Spencer Strider or give the Blue Jays some love and we're going to fade the public? Yeah, uh, I'm looking at the Braves over the first five here. I, It's 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 Atlanta or no for me. Uh, Chris Bassett is alarmingly bad this season. Uh, his expected ERA in the fives, his expected batting average is – almost 25 points higher, which mirrors his seasons back in 2015, 2016, when he was just coming up into the majors. He's just not developing any chases. It doesn't matter that he's limiting hard hit rate His barrel rates high. He's not, it's just, it's just, he's just been a mess completely. I'll let the bundle kind of dive into it more. I've been long saying that Strider has been one of the best, is one of the best pitchers in baseball. And I mean, the value has gone in to win the Cy Young, but I mean, it's Atlanta or nothing for me that the offense is clicking. They have the pitching edge on both the starting pitching and the relief in the bullpen. The offense also arguably is, is, is as good, if not better too. So, but I'll let the bundo take it away. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm going to make the case. He is the best pitcher in baseball because with the Grom hurt, who's better. Corbin uh, Burns is strikeout and whiff rates are down. You can make the case maybe for Garrett Cole. You could convince me on that, but I would take Strider over anybody right now. Uh, and it's, if you look at the stuff plus leaderboard, who is number one in starting pitcher stuff plus in major league baseball this year, Spencer Strider. So, uh, you know, it, he is the best starter and they need him now. I mean, if you look at the Braves, there's some real red flags popping now. Max Fried looks like he's going to miss at least a month. Kyle Wright might miss two. Uh, so really this rotation is going to get really stretched. So they're going to need Strider. Uh, not really sure how to attack that from a futures perspective, you know, really quickly, but like I think that they're still going to win the division because their offense is so good, yep. but there there is risk. But the problem is nobody in the division is sitting there waiting to take <laughs> you know take command. Um, the Phillies are you know sitting at five hundred, and the Mets are don't have a starter name for all weekend games. Right. Well, and and the subject matter for the, for the division is out. The pitching in the entire division is kind of very is very murky, right? Well, the Phillies would be the case, and I know I'm a homer, you know whatever, but uh, they are getting Ranger Suarez back tomorrow. Uh, so the Phillies rotation is as healthy as it's going to be pretty much. Maybe Andrew Painter in a couple months, uh, comes up and takes the fifth spot, but, uh, the Phillies are about as healthy as they're going to be all year. So they could be a team that could make a run similar to last year, but even still on a night to night basis, I don't think they're better than Atlanta. So I, I don't see them making up the seven games and they're 11 to one. It's not a terrible look, but, uh, I don't see it. Uh, but with the Braves tonight, I do like the matchup. I mean, we, we talked about, you know, Chris Bassett coming into the season. I wrote about him as why I was concerned about Bassett. He's one of the slowest workers in baseball uh, in terms of pace. And I think that the pitch clock seems to have had some type of impact on him. And his, his stuff is not very good. I mean, Bassett's always been a guy. He throws like six or seven pitches. Uh, but if none of the pitches are good, that's a problem. And so let's, let's look at it. His fastball stuff plus 75 sinker 86. Cutter, 96. That's solid. 72 on the splitter, 107. So the slider is the only pitch that's above average. The changeup and the uh, curveball both grading out well below average. So as a net net stuff plus, 91. 
that is down there with some very mediocre pitchers. I mean, you can get guys like Kyle Freeland around that area. So I know the command is usually decent, but uh, that kind of stuff against this lineup, this Atlanta lineup, I think is a recipe for disaster. Um, they hit with more power than anybody in baseball. So I think that uh, it's going to be a real risk in that ballpark tonight. I like Atlanta. Uh, I bet the money line last night, like them first five still uh, willing to lay the juice on Strider. I think there's a pretty solid multiple run edge in the pitching quality right now. Minus 160 at BetMGM, full game and first five for the Braves over at BetMGM. Spencer Strider, the co-favorite. Well, if you, you surf around, it's Strider and Zach Gallen right now as the front runners for NL Cy Young in the National League, uh, the NL Cy Young Award. Yeah, I, um, I love Gallen. Don't get me wrong. Been a Gallen guy forever, but he should just looking yeah, at they're... like the stuff and the K rates. Like yeah. I, I think Strider should be the clear favorite. It's really a matter of staying healthy. Right. In the American League, it's more crowded, right? You've got... Cole, Otani, and McClanahan at the top of the uh, leaderboard in odds. Joe Ryan's shooting up that board. <laughs> yeah. Devondo's, Devondo's like banging seventh. the drums. Banging Joe the drums. And, Joe and Kirby are sitting there like seventh and eighth when I looked the other day. Hey, Kirby. Yeah. Okay. Man, Kirby has some life. <laughs> well, and, and to, to Devondo's Debundo, credit, he took Ryan at 30 to one, and that number is shrinking ever so slightly. So <clears throat> you, you probably got the better number. But you need like yeah, but it's 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 crowded at the top is the point. Um, but right well, now I I think Otani is going to win MVP, and I don't think he'll get double dipped. So you take him out, uh, Cole. He might get traded. I just he might get traded. The Angels are. I mean, the Angels are going to probably be around five hundred though. Yeah, they'll be they'll be competing for it. I think I, honestly, like I I could see Cy Young going to Otani, and even like we're we're not even talking about Jordan Alvarez is is doing fine and almost leading the league in RBI and he's and the offense has been horrific. And and as soon as they start getting Altuve Brantley back, it's going to, it's going to change a lot. And and I think the MVP market is probably where you want to attack in the futures right now, if you're going to play something, because Otani is obviously going to shift the market and be such a heavy favorite that other players have value right now. Underdogs that we like for Friday, Charlie, we'll start with you. Yeah, so my favorite underdog is, and this is kind of a disservice to the Fish fans, Tanner McGrath, everyone out there, the Reds on the money line. I mean, <clears throat> this number is just, I can't tell if it's being too much respect for Yuri Perez or too much disrespect to Graham Ashcraft. Like, yes, Graham Ashcraft was tattooed in his last start, but this is a good opportunity to buy low on him. Before that Chicago White Sox start, he'd had a quality start in five of six, and the one that he didn't have a quality start on he went five innings of two-run ball. So he's pitching well. His control has been a little bit wonky as of late, but he's correcting in a lot of areas and, and has improved all his stuff year over year. His expected batting average is down a tenth. His expected slugging down two tenths. His barrel rate's down the four and a half percent. So he's really just making sh important strides and he's using his slider a lot more and it's become his most effective pitch. And when you look at these two teams, right, Miami and Cincinnati, they're almost interchangeable offensively, right? They're 26th and 28th in WRC+, 28th and 20th in WOBA, which Cincinnati has the edge there, and then 25th and 28th in ISO. So the offense, there's not really a huge difference. And then you look at the, the pitching matchup, and Yuri Perez, like, yes, he is a top prospect, and yes, he's going to be great one day, but he's 20 years old, and he's only pitched in double A. and yes, he had a 232 ERA this year in 31 innings, but last year, he had a 408 ERA the, in 17 AA starts, and he had a, almost a one and a half home runs per nine this year in AA. And now he's going to the majors in his debut as a 20-year-old, and he's a heavy favorite. I'm not sure. I make this game close to a coin flip. He's projected, Yuri Perez is projected a, about a, a mid-four ERA by most projections. Has elite stuff, but I mean, at this point, at, at plus 130, all the way down to 115, I would take the Reds. at this is just a great number to grab them as much as, you know, you want to go. You don't want to go against the hype of this, you know, phenom, youngest prospect to ever pitch for the Marlins. But, I mean, you have to at this number. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he's cut back on the home runs, too. Only two home runs allowed in 30 innings. Who, Ashcraft? Ashcraft? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's he completely changed his arsenal. Uh, like, instead of using, you know, three, four pitches, he's – cut it down to basically two he acts as sinker by 13 percent this past year and he's throwing his slider almost 40 percent of the time as opposed to 27 last year so let's get a 184 expected batting average it's, it's completely changed just how he effective he's been and the bundo obviously has talked about how good ashcraft has been in the offseason and all the work that he put in there 
he allowed 11 home runs last year in 19 starts. So two in 30 innings, two and in seven starts. Okay, DeBundo, underdog you're targeting for Friday. Yeah, real quick, I'll touch on that game. Uh, I bet the under eight. It's down to seven and a half. I'd pass now. Uh, it gets back to eight like the under. Uh, do like both pro- pitchers compared to projections. Perez projected, you know, most projections have him like 4-2, 4-3 ERA. Uh, Ashcraft around 4-5. Ashcraft, like at some point, he's going to have to start striking people out more or cutting the walks because the peripherals are not going to hold up in that ballpark whatsoever. This week, he gets to play in Miami, though. Uh, so a pretty big park upgrade for him. Uh, you mentioned the home run problem. The increase in stuff, I think, is the reason you're going to see a decrease in homers. If your stuff is uh, you know, harder to barrel, it's going to be um, you can give up fewer homers. So I, I think that's part of it. But his BABIP allowed, given his mix, is interesting because you know a cutter guy typically is able to suppress BABIP. He hasn't really been able to do that. So I'll be watching that. Uh, that's really the next step for him to take that jump forward. He either needs to cut, he needs to improve his K minus BB or figure out how to better suppress batting average on balls in play because otherwise the projections are never going to really like him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I don't know how much he'll beat those projections long term with those numbers. Uh, but I do like him in this start against Miami. And I agree with Charlie Perez is electric. I mean, he's like 6'8. So <laughs> have fun tonight, Reds. Anyway, and good command, which is always good for a rookie. I like. The San Diego Padres against the LA Dodgers who have owned them in the regular season for a long time now. I think we're getting a discount on Blake Snell, and I think this is a good sell-high opportunity on Dustin Meh, as I call him. Um, He has not really improved his zone rate, Uh, and and that was the one thing with him. He hasn't been throwing as many breaking balls, uh, and you know the thought was, okay, well, that will help him improve his command, but it really hasn't. so I'm I'm still kind of skeptical that May has you know really taken this step forward. The projections have loved him forever, despite uh, you know the strikeout numbers not being that dominant, uh, and he's still you know not generating a ton of uh, swings and miss. He's not um, sitting in the zone that much, and so he just has an above average walk rate that becomes a real issue against a patient lineup like the Padres. And I know you can say the exact same thing for Blake Snell, right? Like Snell has command issues. He gets into these uh, these long innings. Um, but Snell has always projected well against the Dodgers because the Dodgers are much better from the against righties than lefties. Uh, and he has the swing and miss stuff to get them out, which, you know, he's going to generate a lot more whiffs uh, than Dustin Meh is in this start. So I'm going to take uh, the Padres uh, plus 120 uh, on the money line here. I know uh, that the strikeout rate is down for Snell, but it's actually the swinging strike rate. If you look at like a rolling graph, it is starting to trend back up again for Snell. And so I, I think that the the early season blip was just a blip and that Snell will be will be fine so uh, I like the Padres here uh, plus 120 is my underdog of the day quickly I know a lot of the folks here at Action Network have been high on the Padres they were high on the Padres entering the season would you consider that MGM has them at plus 160 to win the division they've got to have a good weekend here to make that worth your time because the Dodgers are minus 160 but any interest in playing the Padres now, or is this one of those situations where you want to wait till after the weekend because if they lose two out of three, worst case, they get swept. Um, Dodgers might be not running away with it, but the Dodgers will have a comfortable lead. Either of you have a thought on that? Padres future division, if they have a good weekend here? I mean, like I've been saying, I've been one of those Action Network guys that have been on the Padres, and I I think that if you... Yeah, I I mean, I think that now would be a good time to buy if you're hesitant and worried if even if you wait the series and they and the Padres win two out of three like that number won't decrease by that much because it's such a minimal in the in the grand scheme of things like three games and or one game difference is, is so minimal in this entire span there's still a lot of baseball left yeah. but yeah I mean I think if you continue to buy low on the Padres you're gonna profit in the end because this team is not gonna struggle offensively like they have in April and they've been coming they be, became a little bit better as May has come around, but Soto, Machado, Tatis, they're gonna hit. And I I like the the positive outlook on this team. So and I'm not as high on the Dodgers. I'm not sure if the Bundos, but like I'm I'm not that high on this team. I I think that there's some obvious flaws that you know Mookie can't be playing shortstop. So yeah. And they don't meet again Debundo until August. So this is sort of a Sort of a big series. And there's less division games head to head. So that's something to factor in too. So these head to head matchups Diego. matter. Say again. That might be good for San Diego. They <laughs> not had a lot of success against the Dodgers. Right. Head to head. Uh yeah. Um, I am doing a slate breakdown today. You can find that in the app. Probably be up around 
Beautiful. One o'clock. And uh, I will have a couple graphs, fan graphs, graphs. Love, love graphs. Can't use that on the podcast, obviously. But, and they're not uh, going to be mad graphs, be, right? They're going to be good graphs. It'll be good graphs. The best graphs. Um, okay. But it's the not rolling expected Woba of Juan Soto and Manny Machado. Uh, and some signs that the two of those guys are finally figuring it out, uh, which I think is the difference. I mean, the two best hitters on the Padres have not hit for uh most of the season they have below average uh numbers relative to their projections uh machado is below league average and soto's uh starting to heat up but uh, i think the rolling numbers on them you're starting to see the improvements and that will be the key to the padres i i still think this is like a coin flip division but um don't hate the plus 160 okay that's where it is entering the weekend and they don't face each other again until august I'm already looking forward to a potential. I'm guessing, I'm guessing. See, I've been doing this enough now where I could figure out and project what you might pick, but Waka Gonsal on Sunday night might be a good over spot because, you know, Tony Gonsal was like the luckiest pitcher in baseball last year. And Michael Waka's, uh, he's okay. The bundle loves fading Waka. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Look forward to that over the weekend. Follow the guys on the app. If you like this series, Dodgers and Padres, good weekend series. They'll have picks in the app all weekend, like any other game. Okay, yeah. a couple more bets from each of you, and then we'll get out of here. Charlie's got a couple more, and then Anthony's got a few. Yeah, so I'll just quickly touch on Tigers. I'm also with in lockstep with Anthony on the Tigers money line here. Matt Boyd, a positive regression candidate. A 67 and a half left on base percentage is just unsustainably low. It's going to regress, and he's pitching very well. Like it's not he's not a concern. His expected metrics are a lot lower than his actually right. Marco Gonzalez. Love to fade him. And Detroit, they're actually 18th in WRC plus against left-handed pitching. Like the last few weeks, they've been a, an above average offense. And, and Seattle, DeBundo's talked about how Julio Rodriguez has carried them. They're actually 27th in WRC plus against left-handed pitching. So the, even the offensive edge here favors Detroit given the pitching matchups. And then uh, the Athletics and the Rangers. Listen, I came on, I, don't, I think it was maybe a, a couple weeks ago that I came on and I gave out the Athletics money line also against the Rangers. This time, Ken Waldachuk against Martin Perez. Perez is a, is a negative regression candidate. He Last year he was one, and this year, once again, his expected metrics are just uh, almost a run higher than his actual ERA. He's given up a near 290 expected batting average. His expected slugging is 435. Barrel rate, yes, it's gone down a little bit, but his strikeout, strikeouts are down significantly, and his walk rate remains around that 7 to 10% edge. So there are concerns with Martin Perez, and I think he's going to struggle and – I think the athletics are going to be undervalued here, given that circumstance. Obviously, you look at Oakland and and they've lost five in a row and they're a disaster. But at plus 162, I like them. Perez, uh, near 80% left on base rate, which is just unsustainably high. And Oakland's actually 16th in WRC plus against left-handed pitching. So they're hitting left-handed pitching well. And I think they're a live underdog here with Waldachuk. His expected ERA is nearly a run and a half lower than actual. So He's limiting hard contact. He's not really doing much wrong. And then the last one, Reds and, and the Fish, first five under four and a half. I'm 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 fine with the juice four and a half or take the four with around even money. We talk about we talked about Ashcraft. I talked about Ashcraft and DeBundo has briefly touched on Yuri Perez and, and how he's on the under. I'm just trusting the starting pitching in this matchup. I think Ashcraft in, in, in this Marlins ballpark is going to be more than capable to go five, six innings of, of one two-run ball and – you know, by the upside of Yuri Perez, I just think the Reds have the ultimate upside in the end with the veteran experience, or I guess not the veteran experience, but Gashcraft has been in the league for two years, and this is a 20-year-old making his debut. So I like the first five under here, four and a half, four. Oakland's been favored in one game this year. They're eight and 31 overall, eight and 30 as an underdog. I'm curious as to what game that might be. It would probably be against another. Uh, he was favorite said, against the Royals last weekend. Yeah, yeah. it was Mason, Mason Miller, Miller and he any any and, and lost. he lost. Yep, and I had. Hurt. Yeah, I had to, I had him over the first five. I think it was minus one oh five at the time. But yeah, I mean, athletics, I, I said it. I forgot to say that I wrote it in my note. Yeah, uh, please do. Like, yes. Uh, so last time I gave out the athletics, it was donkey. Right. And and flying in the air. This one, it's another Friday night. So it's another athletics bet. It's like shake and bake and Talladega nights. And uh, one of my favorite scenes in that show is when they're at the bar and they just win and they go, yeah, we're so good. We're like shake and bake. Like we're so good. It goes together like Chinese food and chocolate pudding. So, you know, a Friday night and the athletics money line right along those lines of just how good, you know, your Friday night can get. Debundo, you've got a couple more games you want to touch on and one more underplay you'd like to give out. Yeah, I'm buying JP France. The Stuff Plus numbers are very impressive in AAA. They translated well into his first major league start. 
Uh, and I think Michael Kopech is an interesting character this year because he has been really bad. If you pull it up, uh, I mean, it's some of the worst stuff in baseball. He's been barreled up a thousand times and and his expected ERA is, is north of, of, of eight. Um, but I think I'm starting to think, and I read an article that makes me believe that there was some kind of tipping issue going on with Kopech uh, because the uh, getting barreled as much as he was, given that his stuff is still above average, is kind of crazy. Uh, and after reading that article that he may have been tipping, I'm, I'm of the belief that perhaps that was part of the reason uh, that his numbers are way off, uh, you know, in terms of getting hit really hard. Uh, and so if you just bank in that, like, okay, maybe the projections are just kind of wrong on Kopech right now because of that XERA is so inflated and, and everything, uh, and that he sorted out the tipping issue, that uh, the the market's just too high here with a total at nine and two lineups that project in their worst offensive split here. Houston crushes lefties. White Sox, as we know, crush lefties, both getting a righty today. Uh, I think that France and Kopech total getting to nine at one book is just too high. So I'm going to bet the under uh, and and ride uh, JP France tonight, uh, who, like I said, impressive stuff in his debut. Okay, that's it, folks. Again, don't forget to follow the guys on the free award-winning Action Network app. Leave us that five-star rating and review for a chance to win a free year of Action Pro, or you can get some Action Network swag. For Charlie DeSterco, Anthony DeBundo, Brendan Glasheen, we will see you back here Monday morning. Thanks for listening to Payoff Pitch, Action Network's MLB betting podcast presented by BetMGM. Have a great weekend.